Hi, I'm Rohit Kapoor. I'm a distinguished engineer at Cadence. Uh, today, I'm going to give you an introduction on scan compression. Uh, let, let me start with describing scan design. Uh, what you see in this picture out here is uh, a, a design with three scan chains. There are three scan ins and three scan outs. And you have three scan chains uh, in this design, which represent all the flip-flops of the design. As designs have got larger, the number of flip-flops has increased much more than the scan I.O., and these scan chains have got longer and longer. So what does a test pattern look like in scan? What we end up doing is we apply a stimulus, which is a shift operation into the scan chains. And then after that, we apply a capture cycle, and then we scan out the response. The adjacent patterns are overlapped, and hence the test time, if you were to calculate it for a single pattern, is the shift operation plus the capture cycle, which is primarily the shift operation uh, alone, because it's, it's pretty much the length of the chain. So if this chain length is about uh, 100, then the uh, shift time is about 100 cycles, and the capture cycle represents about one cycle or two cycles. So the test time is uh, uh, dependent on the scan chain length, and of course, multiplied by the number of patterns that you have for that test set. So the more, longer the shift length, more the test time. If you compute the data volume, it's a similar calculation. In this case, the uh, stimulus and the responses that are uh, saved on the tester are also uh, are represented in this equation where it's multiplied by that amount of data. Uh, again, the data volume also increases as the chain length increases. So this became a problem, especially in the early 2000s, and uh, the test data volume and test application time had to be addressed uh, f because the test cost really went up. In the early days of solving this test cost issue, uh, the one solution was uh, presented was the low-cost testers. Basically, the uh, ATE equipment represented a huge uh, expense, which was the which dominated the test cost of a single chip. However, the low-cost testers did not solve the all the test problems of a single device, and hence it was not a successful direction to take for solving the test cost problem. Logic BIST was a solution around the, uh, which was available in those days. Uh, it was also known as a tester on chip. It represented having zero data volume, meaning you generate all the patterns on the chip itself. But the patterns were all random, and hence uh, it took longer to test the device. Logic BIST uh, flows also required X cleaning the design, which was very difficult for or to do it for any average design. So logic BIST also was uh, unsuccessful for those reasons. Uh, final, the final solution which actually got adopted was scan compression. I'm going to now introduce you scan compression. This was introduced by the EDA vendors. So to solve this test cost issue, the chain lengths were the real problem that was uh, recognized in, in this uh, case. So what was done is that the chains were decoupled from the scan-in and the scan-out. Once you decouple the scan chains from the scan-in and scan-outs, you're able to create many more smaller chains, and hence the chain lengths have now reduced. In this case, it's marked as CL, compressed chain length. Now the problem becomes adding in some logic to interface the few scan-ins to the many chains and the few scan, out, uh, few scan outs to the many chains to get the responses. This logic here is called the codec, which represents the decompressor and the compressor. And uh, when data, when test patterns are streaming in, just like so you get do it with scan, you have the same shift operation and a capture operation. The test time equations look the same. It's basically the compressed patterns times the compressed chain lengths. Now, if the chain length is reduced by 50 times, you're expecting to get 50x compression. So that is what scan compression is all about. So the quality of results of scan compression are measured by the ratio of test time relative to scan test time. 
So if the scan time was uh, 1000 and now you've got it down to 10, you basically have got 100x compression. Uh, and clearly you can see that in the equations. Uh, if, the, if the pattern counts remain the same, that is when you test under compression, the same number of patterns are required compared to scan, then the ratio of scan chain length to the compressed chain length defines the amount of compression you're going for. And that is what we call uh, the amount of compression that you're uh, targeting uh, in a particular design. And if the pattern count increases, your achieved compression is slightly lower because of the, this ratio is not one. Thank you, and see you at the next Whiteboard Wednesdays.